Okay, today um, I'm going to talk about a pliosaur which I discovered in 2006. And I initially found some of these bones, which is probably the coracoid, so it's part of the petrol girdle. Um, coming out of the cliff. Initially I found them falling out of the cliff and then I was able over several days to excavate further and get the rest of all these different bones out. And it's quite a good size pliosaur and in the cliff it's not that far away from where um, C. rex, the Attenborough pliosaur is is currently coming out. So Steve reckons in um, terms of time they probably only lived possibly a few thousand years apart and they could even be the same species of pliosaur. So that was 2006 and then four years later in 2010 I was walking along and then in exactly the same place I found more bones starting to emerge from the same part of the cliff. And the first bit I spotted falling out was these phalanges, which are beautifully articulated. So I excavated them and then that led back into the cliff and right into this and giant femur. I spotted the end of, of this huge femur, so it's just initially this end, end bit was sticking out. So I, over a period of three days, first of all I excavated that, the end, and I was really pleased with the distal end, and I thought I really hope I can get some more of it. And then the next day I was able, digging further in, to get this middle section of it, and then on the third day, I was thrilled that I was actually able to get out the whole of the proximal end. And I was able to stick the three sections together, which makes a truly massive, beautiful... I actually think that's the humerus, because, yeah, it's probably the humerus. And then some years later, um, my friend Bruce, um, found the other one coming out in the same place which he excavated and has put together very beautifully. And so they've got the, the pair of probably humeruses. We can't be a hundred percent sure. But going back to my original dig was I then sort of worked my way along the cliff creating a sort of letterbox to get the bones out. And next I started to come across lots of large, chunky dorsal vertebra. So these are the vertebra that I was excavating. Um, and this is one of the cervical vertebras. So that's in the, the neck of the of the pliosaur, that would be quite, quite near the skull. And then these other ones of the dorsal vertebra. And it was such an exciting excavation because they're really passionate about vertebra. And to have so many such beautiful, great big chunky ones coming out. And when you're doing a sort of cliff excavation, you've got to almost sort of create this sort of letterbox. And you've got to go in quite well above the bones and quite well below. And then gradually you can get, get behind them. And eventually they come out quite easily without, without being damaged too much. So you can see the, how beautiful and sharp they are. So I worked along through the vertebra and there were various, quite a number of ribs I was discovering. And there are also various vinyl processes which went on onto the vertebra, which were quite nice. And I also came across 
embedded in the cliff was the scapula, which is nice. It probably could relate to this coracoid, because I'm having it articulate on, I think probably like that, onto the coracoid. And they also found these much larger bones here, which I'm not precisely sure if that may, may even be part of the um, pelvic girdle, possibly the pubis or the ischium. And a really interesting thing that I discovered was amongst the ribs was this bone which is possibly, possibly from a smaller juvenile pliosaur or a plesiosaur and this was lying amongst the ribs and as you can see from those marks along it the ribs are actually lying alongside it and either side of it and very strangely normally when you find uh, a large femur or humerus it's lying like that but this one, very strangely, was lying on its side like that, with the ribs along it. So both Steve and I wondered if it was actually something that the pliosaur had eaten prior to when it died. So it does have a, a very large pre-fossil fossilization indentation there, which Steve doesn't think is a, a tooth mark. But that was, in terms of what Steve refers to as being diagnostic, I think that's really interesting as to how that femur from another beast got within the ribcage of the initial pliosaur. So that poses many questions. And I keep looking out at the cliff because I think there's probably still quite a lot of more of it in there. That's all we've got for you today from the Etches Collection. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more and hopefully we'll see you next time.